um, so you can leave here confident and comfortable and have the tools you need to continue to practice what you learned on your own time. We're just on the outskirts of Austin um, at a gun range, which is our private range that we use uh, for all of our classes. And today you're actually going to get an opportunity to shoot a Ruger 22, a Glock 19, a 38 Special revolver, and also an AR-15 and a 12 gauge shotgun. So you're going to you're going to have some awesome, you know, an awesome experience here. And your instructor today is going to be Jeremy. Jeremy's a Marine Corps sniper, and he's very good at what he does. Very, so he'll be nice and patient with me. Absolutely. He's going to be very patient with you. Uh, we're going to take it at your pace, and you're going to get a good experience. I'm excited. Awesome. All right, so first and foremost, it's always safety. Right? I know you covered it in the class earlier, but it's always you never tr point at anything you do not intend to shoot. Always keep the weapon on safe until you intend to fire and keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. This is a 22 caliber pistol. We're going to shoot the Glock 19. This is a 9 millimeter pistol. Front sight. <gasps> Perfect. Oh my God. Right. Finger off the trigger if we're not ready to fire. Holy moly. <laughs> that was. <laughs> That one's a little more powerful. It's a little more powerful. All right, great shot, go ahead and set it down. Ooh. Great shooting, especially for a beginner. You don't need an AR-15. It's harder to aim, it's harder to use, and in fact, you don't need 30 rounds to protect yourself. Oh God. Oh. If you want to protect yourself, get a double barrel shotgun. Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for showing me the ropes today. I was really very much afraid when I first stepped in here. And now I see it's, it's not that frightening. I just need a little bit more practice. I was quite surprised getting to test out all those different kinds of guns. Initially, I really thought a revolver was gonna be for me. At least this particular style was a little difficult to pull the trigger, quite difficult. If I was in a, a dangerous situation where I had you know only seconds, that wouldn't have been the gun for me, but it was the Ruger 22, which I was quite surprised. That was the one I thought, no way, that's frightening. It'll, it'll be just too easy to shoot. Something like a klutzy girl like me, dangerous, scary, but actually I was quite happy that gun. It wasn't heavy. The recoil wasn't that bad. Shotgun. I know how to shoot it <laughs> in a zombie type situation. I know that I can protect myself. Is it the gun for me? I don't know, unless they make smaller ones, I guess. But how'd I do? He did pretty well, especially <laughs> for the first time out here, um, even from the beginning. And when you did something different or the, your grip changed, you automatically changed it before, before you shot the next round. Uh, you were safe the entire time. Your group was great. Um, I'd love to have you back out here anytime. Mm -hmm. Well, I would love to be back. Very exciting, feeling very empowered. This is definitely the good first step towards true female empowerment, uber feminism. This is what feminism is all about, is to be able to protect yourself, to not be afraid, to look danger right in the eye. Celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. And now you can protect yourself from corrupt cops with the InfoWars dash cam. It's your car's black box that records all that the driver sees and hears. And introducing the Block It Pocket. It renders your phone undetectable while protecting your private data and your health. Or take back your privacy and protect your personal information by getting your very own detractor cell phone pouch. So get incredibly high quality freedom-based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com.
My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. And welcome back. Our guest tonight is Dimitri Karras of Ares Armor, the California gun manufacturer. Now, Dimitri had his stores raided by the ATF a few weeks ago. They said he had some products in his store that he wasn't supposed to have. Not only his products, they were interested in his customer list. But don't worry if you were a, a customer of Ares Armor. He's doing everything he can to encrypt those files, to keep them out of the hands of the ATF. He joins us now to talk more about this. Dimitri Karras, thank you for your time, sir. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me on. So give us the updates. You know, our viewers know about your situation, about your shop being raided. What are the new updates? Um, well, right now we're kind of in a, a little bit of a, a legal quagmire as far as what steps we're taking next. Um, the raid essentially did the following. We had a, a restraining order, a temporary restraining order issued against them. That restraining order was intended to stop them from taking the customer data and from taking the product in question until the course could figure out the situation that was at hand. Well, since they were able to go um, around the intent of what that restraining order was and go to a separate judge and get a, um, a search warrant issued, they were able to grab up all the stuff. Well, pretty much what that did is it mooted the case of the restraining order, so we actually had to stay that case temporarily in order to reamend our complaint, if that makes any sense at all. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest with you, <laughs> and this is something I've learned about the, the criminal justice system that we have in this country, is federal agencies will use um, the criminal court system as a uh, strategy tool in civil cases, which is exactly what just uh, what it what it looks like happened to us here. Is what they'll do is in order to get things out of civil court, they'll try and bring things around on the criminal side in order to stay cases or to uh, muddle cases that are going on 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 the civil side, which would expose them to liability. Mm -hmm. Um, now, with that said, even though it's it's stayed temporarily, it's just a uh, a roadblock, so to speak. And the first step in this process right now is for us to get a hold of the affidavit that they use in order to get that search warrant, because I'm very very sure that they failed to mention certain things. Like I, and again, nobody's seen it yet, right. but I'd be uh, shocked if they mentioned the contested status of the um, of the parts in question. Or if they mentioned that they were wrong in their determination or any of these other things that probably the judge should have been made aware of when they were doing that, uh, that search. And the ear did an interesting, interesting thing. The very first thing they did when they came to raid us, guess what the very first thing they did when they came in was? After they, uh, what, they cut the lock on your door, then they busted in? Yep. Okay, so what did they do when they did that? They went and looked for the cameras to turn them off. Really? Yep. Uh, every single building, that's their SOP. Whenever they, they come into a building, um, the, the building that I was at, I actually, they didn't kick the door down. I, they were very polite. I opened the door for them. Mm -hmm. And the agent actually asked me, are there cameras here? I said, yes. He said, can you turn them off? I said, yes, I can turn them off. But why would I want, why, why do you want me to turn them off? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, we don't want videotape of the, uh, you know what I mean? Of like, no, they our, are illegal our activities. Off. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But here's the entertaining thing is they're telling us all the time, when they put these cameras up all over the place, like on, on our traffic lights, and I mean, you can't walk more than a hundred feet in any major city in this country without passing six freaking cameras. Oh, that's exactly and they right. Tell you, it's you know, oh well, if you're not doing anything bad, you shouldn't worry about it. I would like to pose the same question to them. Yeah, that's the truth. Why are you worried about my camera system? Yeah, <laughs> that is that is the truth. Now I saw you have something on your site talking about encryption, and you're, uh, I guess, you're concerned about that. Absolutely, and uh, this, this whole event has uh, made it clearly obvious that 
um, our customer data needs to be better uh, protected from anyone who would attempt to uh, otherwise garnish that information for their own purposes that is not, you know, in the best interest of our customer or from anyone for that matter. Um, and so we have brought in some people who to, to look at our systems and everything like that and ensure that they are protected going forward as best as technology can allow. Um, I don't want to get into, like, which encryption programs we're going to be using or how we're going to be doing our encryption, uh, mostly because that's... That's understandable. That's understandable. As but as just, just, making, uh, just doing the, your due diligence to make sure that your customers are protected. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's, it's honestly sad that you have to do this kind of a thing, um, you know, because your concern is that, well, there's government agencies out there who will lie and cheat and steal and do whatever it is that they think. Oh, not the government. Come on, Dimitri. They, they never yeah. done anything like run guns into Mexico or anything like that. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Well, and here's the other entertaining thing about this situation. If you call the, uh, the courthouse where the restraining order was issued from, or not the restraining order, but the search warrant was issued from, uh, as of right now, they have no record of the search warrant ever even existing. Really? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's an interesting little twist of events. Um, it's not an unusual thing because they went to the judge in the middle of the night, um, which is, you know, in, uh, in line with their actions up to this point. Definitely, definitely going and having a secret warrant issued in the middle of the night that nobody can see and everything else mm -hmm. is definitely in line with their behavior up to this point, so I'm not shocked by it. Right. But as of yet, there's been no return on the warrant. The uh, court itself doesn't even have a record of, of the warrant ever even being issued. So it's almost, again, a delay tactic, I'm assuming, to, uh, to, to kind of stop us from being able to get that affidavit and being able to get the information that we need to proceed in court, but they can only use that delay tactic for so long. So, All right, it is, so I mean, we're going to get that information. Right. So I want to get your views on some other gun stories that are going on. But first, can you tell me what's next for Ares Armor? Um, the biggest thing right now is we're, we're back up. We're operating. Um, so you your know, store is open again? Absolutely, yes. Okay. We had the retail stores open uh, the very next day. Our store in Oceanside was actually open the night. It was uh, about around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I believe it was, somewhere around there, um, the very same day of the raid. Um, our store in National City was open the next day, and we were up online shipping orders out again as of the uh, following Monday. Very good, very so we good. Are, we are at full operational speed again, and we're 100% moving forward. Actually, some of our projects uh, are actually ahead of schedule, even with this delay. I know that the Cronus Pistol Upper, we should be shipping those out almost two months ahead of schedule. Great. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Glad to see that they couldn't shut you down. Now, I want to get your viewpoint on a few other gun-related stories that are going around. I know in California, I believe it's Sunnyvale, California, they have the uh, the magazine ban. Are you familiar with that? Um, not 100% familiar with that one. They, they did a magazine ban in a specific county? That's yes, it's, it's, uh, we have the article. It says California has refused to turn in newly banned magazines. So basically in Sunnyvale, California, they said that you can't have your, quote, high-capacity magazine. And, you know, just, your, just you as a military man, do you think that's constitutional for them to say that you can't have a, a particular type of magazine? I think that's an absolute joke, <laughs> to, to be honest with you. And that's kind of, a, it's, it's going across the state. I know that the, uh, the ban was on the rebuild kits and everything else like that, and these other ways that people were using um, you know, to, to replace their old magazines and things like that. But with that being said, if you look at, like, previous things that happened in history, which is the Battle of Athens, mm -hmm. um, the, the key important thing to learn from that is that the civilians need to have weapons that are equal grade to the local law enforcement, otherwise tyranny can just flourish. Yes. The, the, you know, the sheriff that was out there um, during the McKean County War, which is what I was just bringing up, uh, he would probably still be in power and still be uh, manipulating all the elections and still be doing all these things if the local citizens would not have been able to go out and actually get we military-grade weapons um, to, to push that, that you know, force back. That's right. Now, I want you to speak more about this because you're a military man. And, you know, a lot of people, they ask these questions, why do you need a assault rifle? Why do you need a high-capacity magazine, as it's been termed? They say, why do you need military-grade equipment? Can you elaborate more to that end? And, well, it, it's almost exactly what I was just saying right there. If you One of the biggest reasons for firearm ownership is to be able to, to 
combat your local government if it should be so required, if they ever start stepping out of line. And for people to say that our, our government would never step out of line because we're the United States of America is to keep their head buried so far in the sand that they can't, you know, uh, understand anything that's going on around them. Our country is going down the tubes faster than you can possibly imagine. And having weapons that are of equal grade to to the actual government is of great import to the people of this country. It is of great import. Very good, and that's very well spoken, because a lot of people, they just don't seem to understand this, because they think that we live in this perfect world.